Hi, welcome to my talk about tight security for key out any ciphers with correlated subkeys. I'm Shi Hu Zhang, and this is joint work with Stefano Tessero. A T round key out any cipher construction is built on T public permutations, pi one to pi T, and consists of T plus one and bit subkeys, S0 to ST. The KSC has received considerable attention because it captures the design of substitution permutation network, with the most prominent candidate being AES. Previously, the theoretical analysis of key out and cipher were on the two independence assumptions. That is, the subkeys S0 to ST are independent and sampled uniformly at random. And around permutations pi1 to pi t are also independent and sampled uniformly at random. After a night of work studying KAC, it was proven that under the two independence assumptions, KAC achieves the optimal security, tolerating any adversary that makes at most 2 to the nt over t plus 1 queries, counting both the queries to the cipher construction and the queries to the public permutations, pi1 to pi t. However, the independence assumption is not necessarily realistic in the practical cipher constructions. In particular, practical ciphers generate all subkeys for a short master key. And they use a single permutation for every round instead of independent permutations. Currently, the KSC security without independence assumptions still remains not well understood. There is still a large gap between the theoretical study of KSC and the practical cipher constructions. Bridging the gap turns out to be not easy. Since in the last decade, limited progress has been made towards removing independence assumptions while maintaining the optimal security. The first result was by Dogma et al., where they considered minimizing even Mansell cipher, which is a one round case for KAC. They reduced the master key length from 2 mbit to mbit. Later, Chen et al. successfully minimized two round KAC in both the key length and the number of permutations used. Then, until very recently, the three round case has been addressed by Wu et al. They reduce the number of permutations used by three round KSC to a single permutation on the assumption that all subkeys are independent and uniform. However, for any round larger than three, nothing was understood in terms of either reducing the mass key net or the number of permutations while practical ciphers have large rounds. For example, AES has at least 10 rounds and present has up to 31 rounds. In this work, we focus on the key schedules. In particular, we make the first step towards reducing the mass key length and understanding the security of KSC with correlated subkeys for large rounds on the assumption that the permutations are independent. We focus on studying linear key schedules over field F2 to the N. Our first result provides a T minus one wise key schedule that saves two embed master key for arbitrary round T. We also move one step further by showing a T minus two wise key schedule that saves three embed master key for the KACs having at least eight rounds while maintaining the optimal security. To prove the results, we propose generalizations over the sum capture theorem by Chen et al. We also improve the subkey dependency in the good transcript analysis by Huang and Tessero from T wise to T minus two wise. In the rest of the talk, I will first describe the classical KC analysis framework. The framework is based on transcript analysis where we have the transcripts record the behavior of the adversary. And we partition all the transcripts into either bad transcripts 
or good transcripts. We will primarily focus on the bad transcript analysis, where we first revisit how the sum capture quantity is used for bad transcript in two round case by Chen et al. Then we propose the generalized sum capture quantities with either one or two constraints and present their upper bounds. On the good transcript analysis, due to the time limit, I will only provide the lemma statement. To model security of KC, we consider an adversary that tries to distinguish two worlds. In the real world, the adversary has access to the public random permutations pi1 to pi t and the KC construction, which is built on the permutations. In the ideal world, the adversary can access the public permutations and additionally, a random permutation P, which is independent from all the permutations. In both worlds, the adversary can query any permutations in both forward and backward directions. The security of KC against the adversary A is defined as the advantage of the adversary distinguishing these two worlds. To prove an indistinguishability result, we follow the framework used in previous works and operate on the transcript level. Given an adversary A that interacts in either the real world or the ideal world, we connect all the queries submitted to the site construction or the independent random permutation into a set QE. And we connect all the queries to the public random permutations pi i into a set QI. Then we put the query record sets QE, Q1 to QT, and the randomly sampled master key together as a transcript tau generated by A during the interaction. After defining the transcripts, the classical approach is to partition them into bad transcripts and good transcripts. From the part of bad transcript analysis, our goal is to upper bound the probability of a random transcript X ideal being bad. Where X ideal is generated from the adversary A when interacting in the ideal world. For the good transcript, we follow the expectation method proposed by Huang and Tessero to pick a function G that is defined over our transcripts. We need G to satisfy two requirements. First, G must be non-negative. Second, for any good transcript tau, the quantity one minus G tau should provide a lower bound for the ratio of the probability for obtaining tau in the real world to the probability of obtaining tau in the ideal world. Having G satisfy the above two requirements, we further want to pick a good G that gives an optimal upper bound on the expectation of G X ideal. The final bound on, on, of the advantage directly follows from summing the two upper bounds together. Here, we also use the bad transcript definition from previous works. For any transcript tau, we can represent it into a layered graph that resembles the construction of KAC. The neighboring layers inside the public permutations pi i, the vertices are connected by edges determined by the query record set QI. And the edges between permutations represent the generated subkeys. Now we move to identifying the set of transcripts that is very easy to distinguish between the real world and the ideal world. Here we look at a pair of vertices X, Y in QE, which corresponds to a recorded query from the adversary to the cipher construction. The goal is to check whether the pair of cipher query X, Y is consistent to the underlying permutation queries and the generated subkeys. We start at the cipher input vertex X and move to the rightmost reachable layer from X, giving us a path. From the corresponding cipher output vertex Y, we also obtain a path by moving to Y's leftmost reachable layer. If it happens that the index of the rightmost reachable layer from X is no less than the index of the leftmost reachable layer from Y for some pair of X, Y in QE, 
then such transcript is easy to distinguish between real and the ideal. Because in the real world, the two paths of X and Y must connect to be a chain. While in the ideal world, with high probability, the two paths are disjoint. Implying in a cyclic query is inconsistent to non underlying permutation queries and the generated subkeys. Hence, we call such transcript as a bad transcript. Given we have defined what a bad transcript is, we move to review how to derive the probability upper bound of obtaining a bad transcript in the ideal world on the independent subkey assumption. For T round KC, we can categorize chains into T plus one types, with each type determined by the layer index of the rightmost reachable vertex from X. The sonnet black arrow denotes that the corresponding subkey connects the two queried input output tuple between two public permutations on the cipher construction, while the dotted red arrow denoted the position where the path may fail to connect. If we fix, fix a pair of x, y from the cipher query set QE and start from x to go rightward and y to go leftward, each time we sample subkey edge, it has probability at most q over 2 to the n to hit at a query tuple, the next permutation. In this case, we have t subkeys edges to go, and we ended up to have the probability being q over 2 to the n to the power of t. Taking a union bound of all pairs of x, y, we obtain the upper bound of q to the t plus 1 over 2 to the n t, which matches the optimal concrete security of KAC. However, such analysis can be performed only in the case when the subkeys are at least p-wise independent and uniform. So we need techniques to go beyond this barrier. The first step that go beyond the t-wise independence barrier was proposed by Chen et al. when they studied the two-round KAC. Here, we look at the two-round KAC construction built over two independent random permutations with all three subkeys being identical to the m-bit master key. In two-round KAC, there are three types of chains for a bad transcript. Here, we focus on third type, where the cipher query input x can reach to the output point v2 of the second permutation, we are going through the edges. We want to count how many master key k can lead to such type of bad chain. In particular, if we fix the query records QE, Q1, Q2, in this case, we say a master key k is bad if it generates subkeys that connects some query cipher input x to some query the input output pair U1, V1 of permutation pi 1 then to some u2 v2 of permutation pi 2. Given all subkeys being identical to master key k, the condition implies that x xor u1 equals v1 xor u2. However, it is unwieldy to directly count the number of bad keys. Instead, Chen et al. considered the quantity mu that counts all tuples satisfying x xor u1 equals v1 xor u2. Here, mu acts as an upper bound over the number of bad keys, since all bad keys should have the corresponding tuples satisfy the equality. And this equality is exactly the capture sum of the tuples. In a quantity mu, we have up to q cube tuples. However, given the capture sum constraint, what we would expect is that roughly one over two to the n fraction of the tuples satisfy the equality. And if this is true, then it implies that the probability of getting a bad transcript should match an optimal security upper bound for two round KAC. So our first result can be considered as a direct generalization of the result by Chen et al. Here we consider t minus one wise key schedule, where the master key can be interpreted as a vector which consists of t minus one field elements if f two to the n. The key schedule algorithm is to directly apply a matrix A 
to mask the key vector and obtain the subkeys, which can also be viewed as a vector of T plus one field elements in F2 to the N. The requirement that we impose on the metric A is that it must give T minus one wise independent and uniform subkeys. Or in other words, and T minus one rows of matrix A form a submatrix of rank T minus one. To perform the back transcript analysis for T minus one wise linear key schedule, we can similarly define a sum capture quantity that counts the tuples that have T sub keys involved. Here on the sum capture quantity contains query records for T minus one permutations and two additional sets with all of them having size Q. The equality constraint involves all the involved T sub keys with its coefficients CIs determined by key schedule matrix A. It essentially says that any subset of T minus one sub keys uniquely fix the remaining one sub key. For the defined sum capture quantity, we show that if the vector of coefficient C comes from the T minus one wise linear key schedule, then for moderately large Q with high probability, we have the quantity upper bounded by Q to the T plus one over two to the N, which implies an optimal upper bound for obtaining a bad transcript in the ideal world. And the lemma is proved by Fourier analysis. Our second result studies the T minus two wise key schedule, where the master key has been shortened to T minus two times M bit. The key schedule matrix A now has one fewer column. And now we require A to give T minus two wise independent and uniform sub keys. We still have some capture quantity that gets T sub keys involved. However, now we have two equality constraints. Both constraints are again determined by the key schedule matrix A. Essentially, the constraints are saying that any subset of T minus two subkeys uniquely fix the remaining two subkeys. However, the proof of the two constraints sum capture quantity turns out to be much more involved and we were able to prove only a sub optimal bound represented by two turns. Using the sum capture quantity bound, we can derive an upper bound for the probability of obtaining a bad transcript in the ideal world. We can observe that term one, all workplace gives optimal security for Q for any round T. However, term two is the bottleneck and it implies optimal security only when the KC has at least A rounds. After performing the batch transcript analysis over the T minus one wise and T minus two wise key schedules, what is left now is a good transcript analysis. Here, we directly state the lemma that applies to both key schedules. The lemma is very similar to what was stated by Huang and Cerro this optimal bound is still maintained. The only difference here is that the requirement for subkey dependency has been weakened from T wise to T minus two wise. Finally, by putting both analysis together, we conclude the optimal securities for both T minus one wise and T minus two wise key schedules. In conclusion, we studied the security of KAC on the independent round permutations and correlated subkeys. We show that the T minus one wise key schedules can save two embeds in the master key, and the T minus two wise key schedules save three embeds when the round T is at least eight. However, there are still many open problems in studying KC security with reduced independence. One problem that still remains open is to minimize a three round KAC. Since our T minus two wise key schedule tightness result does not apply to the case when T equals three. Another aspect is to see whether the tightness result can be extended to beyond T minus two wise key schedule for notch T. 
For more details, please check out our paper. And that's all for the talk. Thank you.